Hi guys, welcome back to SSA Athletics. Today we're going to talk about something we don't normally talk about, and it's Winter Olympics based, well, sprinting Winter Olympics based. And we're going to be talking about the sprint starts of the bobsleigh and the skeleton. But before that, don't forget to subscribe, check out our Facebook pages, the training page as well as the normal page, and also check out our website. Now, bobsleigh and bob skeleton has an amazing crossover to sprinting and athletics in that they both utilise a very similar start, although in training we utilise three-point starts. In competition, they will utilise a three-point start for the Bob Skellington and a standing start for the bobsleigh, whereas we only really do them in training. And when it comes to competition, we do what's called a four-point start, otherwise known as a down start or a sprint start. Not only that, a lot of Skellington athletes and bobsleigh athletes are former track and field athletes. They then utilise athletics in the summer part of the season, they do a summer season, in order to help prepare them for the winter, for their main competition phase. Like in almost all sports, speed is highly important, and not more so in bobsleigh and skeleton. Every point of a second you make at the top of the hill could potentially equate to three seconds at the bottom. At the start of the bobsleigh in Skellington, it's highly important that you maximise your power, drive and speed. Although there are similarities in the start in track and field athletics and Skellington and bobsleigh, there are notable differences. And that's what we're going to st discuss today. Starting off with the Skellington Bob, which in other words is going as fast as you can head first on a tea tray. Skellington Bob utilises a three point start, which is something that in athletics we normally, normally do in training unless you are a disabled athlete with special needs. Unlike in athletics, with the Skellington Bob, they're running in that position, whereas we are in our dry phase are coming up. Also, they are leaning more over the line. Now, generally when I like to train and do three-point start, I like to lean more over the line than any of my stuff. But generally, the way we do it, or being taught to do in British athletics, is go to a position that is comfortable. And you can hold, so therefore you prevent full starts. You want to keep a low driving position and allow the free arm to drive forward almost straight. That way we can maximise our drive length with our first few strides being really long and massive so we can help generate speed before going into much shorter strides. Now this is a little bit difficult with the skeleton bob because of the natural positions you're going to find yourself in. The type of body will also affect what you do at the start. Some will like having their hips a little bit more higher well, some like to be a little bit lower of the hips driving forward, but that's all down to personal preference and what works best for you. Some people are utilised a two-hand push technique at the start. Nowadays, that's not used because it's not as quick compared to a single arm push, but some will try and push the heavy sled with two hands at the beginning, therefore driving, keeping the sled in front of them, and therefore then freeing up the single arm for the drum drive, if you utilise a two-hand technique holding on for the whole time you're sprinting, you're not utilising your arm drive. For the push start, you have to run bent down to the sled, trying to push something very heavy along a sheet of ice with only one hand, and it takes many years to perfect. The key things are to keep the sled in front of you. Don't move faster than the sled, or you'll have to turn around to jump onto it according to Lizzie Arnold, British sledder. According to another great British sledder I've managed to listen to, and I'm an athletics coach, so I'm not gonna tell you how to actually slide because that's not my area of expertise. I'm a sprint coach. But according to Amy Williams at the L19 conference, she stated in order to ride one of these, you need to lie down like a sack of potatoes with your shoulders rolled, it, rolled like a turtle. Only is good stride pattern really important for the drive phase of the Bob Skellington. But also, you must have your feet dorsiflexed, just like in athletics. And what we mean by that is having the feet face to the sky, stiff ankles, so that you're able to get a lot of power through the ice. It's time to talk about bobsleigh, or in other words, an F1 car on ice without wheels. But it was just getting faster and faster. And these guys never use the brakes. Although Tall Browning is a really great film, and it does help to emphasise the, the changes and adaptations in the bobsleigh, from utilising 
certain types of athletes, more specific to the bobsleigh, to adapting track and field athletes is not a particular accurate picture of bobsleigh. What are we going to name this leg? How about Tallulah? Yeah. So what's it going to be, Star? What are the people going to be screaming when Jamaica takes the hill? I say we call it Cool Run It. start it's going to depend roughly in which position you are within the team but whatever position you are you have to move into the sled and push through it keeping the sled in front of you as we can see from Mika Moore here someone I know quite well they practice this on dry side with various looking sleds and prowlers and they also pull sleds as well to help recreate the position they would need to be in order to push a real bobsled Unlike track and field athletics, you can have a rolling start off the block, as seen here by the great British team's driver, who's ran off, get a rolling start, and pushed the, that lever he needs to push in order to get a good start. Like American football receivers, the actual athletes are bolt upright, up until the point of pushing, where they go into a diagonal position to push it. This is because of the nature of the actual sport they're doing. Unlike sprinting, where we need to be a little bit lower in order to get our dry face, they can't necessarily do this with the exception of the brake man. The man is at the back and his person's a little bit lower down, and the other two athletes at the other side of them, number two and number three, are also lower down as well. Number two and number three are also able to do this two-footed start, pushing off from a squat position of a literal wooden block. Something the driver can't possibly do. The similarities between this and sprinting in track and field athletics. You still need to get a good drive. Yes, your drive position may be hampered by the fact of whereabouts the bobsleigh is relative to your knee drive. But likewise, it's still a, high, still a good knee drive. You're often around about the second phase of an athletic sprinting. So you get that first two massive strides and then you get into the slightly shorter strides in order to help build acceleration. You're eating the ground up and then you're trying to adapt, 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 adapt in order to get that ground before you get into the pickup. Now, in bobsleigh, they don't actually have a pickup because by the time they've got the bobsleigh to a good acceleration, they're all jumping into the actual bobsleigh itself. Okay, guys, here is a standard sprint spike. This is a Mizumo sprint spike. And now, the difference between these spikes we use on track and field, or in this case, sprinting, compared to the bobsleigh spikes, is that they are they utilize brush spikes, which are illegal in, in track and field athletics because they help rip the track up. However, they're fantastic for gripping ice. We, on the other hand, utilize six millimeter spikes and they're various different types. And we do have a video in that top corner right there that you can watch this and figure out what best spikes could be used and what kind of spike pins that you may need as a track and field athlete. Now, Bob Slay and Bob Skellington athletes will have a pair of these bad boys because guess what? They do track training in the summer, but they will they may even have some middle distance spikes. But they will also have some brush bikes, which they will use both for training and competition. They may have two different types of brush bikes, which they then use one specifically for training and another one specifically for competition. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed and liked this video. We'll be doing more athletics content as natural because that is what we do here. But of course, we may look at the start of the Bob Skellington and Bob Slay of this Olympics and review their actual starts. I'm Adam McCarthy of SSA Athletics, and as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye!